I'm, I'm right here. We want more tequila. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten kids in the hall sketches. Tattoos are for everyone. <laughs> but they do help you remember a guy. <laughs> Oh, Helen. For this list, we're looking at the funniest and most notable sketches from the legendary Canadian sketch show, The Kids in the Hall. What's your favorite sketch? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, things to do. In this sketch, a man played by Kevin McDonald is focused on the list of things he has to do for the day. Got seven things to do. Number one, banking. Number two, pick up <laughs> No, you just knocked over the old lady. Keep moving. You got seven things to do. He's so preoccupied with his tasks that he doesn't pay attention to other people around him, such as the dangerous criminals who take him hostage. Maybe you don't understand the situation that you are in. You are a hostage, and I am a man with a gun. So shut up! McDonald is hilarious with his single-minded fixation, and it's something that we can all perhaps relate to whenever we have to run errands over the course of a day. You gotta keep on top of my life. Okay, you just knock on the same old lady. Keep moving, you got five things to do. Though hopefully we don't get as carried away as this guy. Number nine, becoming a man. While poor Chad is celebrating his 13th birthday party, his dad interrupts the festivities to make him go through a rite of passage to transition him into manhood. Better take off that party hat, son. You're not gonna need it where we're going. Following a bizarre family tradition, Chad's father drives him out in the middle of nowhere and gets drunk right in front of the boy. 10 bucks is 10 bucks. And 20 bucks is 20 bucks. His drunken behavior includes giving unhelpful advice and acting like a fool. This may not sound like a funny idea for a sketch on its face, but the uncomfortable humor and the performance from Bruce McCullough, who plays the alcoholic father, make the sketch work. I want to peruse your report card. I don't have it. <laughs> I said, Mr. I want your report card. Number eight, Gavin, religion. Like several other sketch shows, Kids in the Hall had their share of recurring characters, including Gavin. Did you know that movie stars get their hair cut every day? <laughs> it's true. Movie stars get their hair cut every day so no one will notice and make fun of them. Played by Bruce McCullough, Gavin is a little kid that acts like a socially awkward oddball. Despite trying to be friendly in his interactions, he comes off as a nuisance to everyone around him. No, no, we don't want you to eat our, eat Bible. our Bible. We want you to read, read our, our Bible. Bible. In one sketch, evangelical Christians come to Gavin's house to spread the good news, but after a short conversation with Gavin, they come to regret their decision. Well, we're leaving now, and we're not ever coming back. Ever coming back. Okay, you're my new best friends. No, we are not your new best friends. Okay, bye. If you've ever been hassled by these types, it's satisfying to see the evangelical squirm after meeting their obnoxious match. Number 7, 30 Helens. Another recurring segment from the show involved a group of 30 women named Helen, and the group was diverse in age, race, and height, among other traits. 30 Helens agree. Hawaii was better before. A narrator would say 30 Helens agree on a given subject like it was a commercial where four out of five dentists recommend a product, while the group of Helens would stand out in the middle of a field. Collectively, they would weigh in on topics that ranged from the significance of coleslaw to when it is the appropriate time to show photos of your children. 30 Helens agree. There's a time and a place to show photos of your kids. These segments were completely random, yet strangely pleasant in the way the Helens gently expressed their opinions. As for which one's the best segment, when 30 Helens come together, you can't go wrong. If you want to remember something, write it down! <laughs> That's what pens are for. 30 Helens agree. Number 6. Dr. Seuss Bible Given all the translations of the Bible there are out there, it was only a matter of time before someone came up with this ingenious Dr. Seuss version. One day God said, this is what I will do. I'll send down my son, I'll send him to you. <laughs> to clear up this humpity bumpity hullabaloo. His name will be Christ and he'll never wear shoes. His pals will all call him the King of the Jews. For the concept alone, this is one of the greatest sketches in comedy history. 
In the sketch, Dave Foley, dressed up like the cat in the hat, narrates the gospel in Seussian rhyme. Christ spoke from a mound, which is a pile of ground, and people gathered around without making a sound. Thus he spake. When this first season sketch aired, it was completely cut out in the Canadian broadcast and was only shown once on HBO. Do unto others as they do unto you. That includes you, young Timothy Fu. Full of whimsical blasphemy, this sketch is the kids in the hall at their irreverent best. Number 5. Chicken Lady Played by Mark McKinney, the Chicken Lady was originally created as a last-minute addition to the sketch about a freak show performer who could bleed through his nose at will. A human-chicken hybrid? This grotesque character with a high-pitched voice is the stuff of nightmares. What are you looking at? The show's on the stage. Yeah, you need six tickets if you want to stare at me. She's frisky and has her mind in the gutter, creeping out those around her. Oh, do you like the place? Oh, yeah, sure, it's really nice. I can't stay. Sure you can! <laughs> Have a seat. There are several great sketches featuring this character to choose from, but we're going to go with the one where Chicken Lady works a phone sex line. So, uh, what do you look like? Well, I'm six feet tall. Yeah. With, lo with lots of charm and, and a charm bracelet oh, oh, and a beak and, and chicken's feet and big brown eyes. And I'm wearing a house dress with nothing on underneath because I'm hot, hot for you. It is over the top and completely shameless. Number four, love and sausages. Rather than going for an easy laugh, this ambitious sketch took off in an experimental direction, resembling a short film. The unique style is something fans have come to appreciate. Love and Sausages is surreal and bleak in tone like something out of a Terry Gilliam film, with Bruce McCullough playing a sausage factory employee living in squalor in a working-class neighborhood. While working in the factory, he fantasizes about a co-worker that he wants to help. Scott Thompson turns in a strange performance as an elderly person under McCullough's care who obsesses over sausages. I need more sausages! Okay. I like sausages! Number 3. Buddy is Canadian Kids in the Hall was known for its LGBTQ plus themes and its sketches and characters, and Buddy Cole is the most prominent example. Most people think that I'm from the States. <laughs> And even worse, they think that I'm from New York because I'm so sexy. Played by Scott Thompson, Buddy Cole is an openly gay man who is flamboyant in his mannerisms and his rants. When I'm overseas and people mistake me for an American, I'm as outraged as when I'm mistaken for straight. <laughs> the character has struck such a chord with fans that he crossed over to guest star on The Colbert Report as a correspondent for the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. Of the sketches featuring this character, our favorite has to be the one where Buddy talks about being Canadian. His take on America's understanding of Canada is especially spot on. Americans know as much about Canada as straight people do about gays. <laughs> Number 2. Citizen Kane In this sketch, one friend, played by Dave Foley, is telling another friend, played by Kevin MacDonald, about a movie he saw the other night that he can't remember the name of. It's a classic. It's a, real, it's a classic. It's, um, uh... Oh, I hate this. I hate it when this happens. What was it about? When Foley's character starts describing the movie, it's obvious the movie he was describing was the 1941 Orson Welles masterpiece Citizen Kane. But he stubbornly refuses to admit it. This is definitely Citizen Kane, then. You're talking about Citizen Kane. No, 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 but it's, it's something like that. It's fun to see McDonald's character lose his mind at how stubborn his friend is. And Foley keeps offering different possible movies that don't fit his description. No, no, I just told you. It's about this newspaper tycoon. He had a sled named Rosebud, and, uh, and they're all trying then to Then I guess it, it wasn't Psycho, was it? No, it wasn't Psycho. It was Citizen no. Kane. For anyone who's had a stupid argument with a friend, this sketch is the worst case scenario. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Parenting, a press release many parents would like to give. That we are disappointed, both in our child and in the experience of parenting. The King. Kevin McDonald's character in the sketch is just the worst. You were supposed to meet me at the restaurant at 8 o'clock. Where were you? <sighs> Slipped my mind. But I feel horrible about the whole thing. No! I don't want to hear it! You're the 
king of empty promises, you know that, man? Open letter. Bruce makes some good points in this monologue. Well, why did you do it? <laughs> Are you some sort of jerk or something? It's my front wheel. What'd you think, that I'd drive home and not notice it was stolen? Daddy drank. This sketch where a man recounts his lousy childhood is filled with dark humor. And remember, I can murder you while you sleep. <laughs> It's easy, son. All you have to be is quiet and uh, willing to do it. Girl drink drunk. Delightfully absurd sketch where Dave Foley gets taken down by girly drinks. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Head Crusher For those of you who write in the comments that this list would be invalid if Head Crusher wasn't number one, you're right. Hey everybody, don't panic. I mean, I'm only crushing your head. Perhaps the most known recurring character from Kids in the Hall is Head Crusher. And whenever a sketch pops up with this character, the audience applauds enthusiastically because the character is silly fun. Well, I put my money in my mattress. Well, I put my money in my wallet. You're boring me. I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing your head. Played by Mark McKinney, this strange man looks at people who go past him and he puts two fingers together and pretends he's crushing their heads with sadistic glee. However, in one sketch, he comes across a rival who does something similar, and the two square off because there can be only one. I'll crush your head. Hey, pinching your face! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm over here! Hey, pinching your face! Oh, missed! Missed! Missed again! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.